Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and the best adventure gear for 2024 is whatever you're wearing. Turn me off, go have an adventure. That's a better day. Still here? I can tell you why I chose these decorations if you promise to eat your cake too. As in strip poker, you won't be expecting me to start with the pants. But these are the new climb switchbacks. The thigh pockets still stay accessible in the riding position. Reflectivity still magically appears when you batten down the hatches. And the armor can still be removed from the outside. Not that I would ever do that. The new pads are D3O Ghosts, built to the bare minimum of EN1621 Level 1, which is something not worth talking about. Today I'm more interested in the EN17092 AA412.6 RPM slide rating of this Cordura canvas, which screams that Europeans love alphanumerics, but not much else. Voici la machine d'abrasion pour impact Darmstadt. The hidden meaning is that EN17092 involves dropping a 75 kilo rig of three fabric samples, each at a different thread orientation, onto a concrete pad. If it grinds to a stop without abrading through, climb wins. But what do they win? An AA rating, or 412.6 RPM, maths out to 70 kilometers per hour, if we know the circumference of our circle. Is that enough slide protection for you? I don't know, but that's what it is. If I had my way, I'd regulate a big yellow 70 kph tag on here so that we could all easily buy the gear that does what we need, rather than buying the gear we want and then hoping it'll do what we need. But humans habitually sue each other. So we don't get this. Instead, all we get is a tiny little booklet that says CEEN17092 AA412.6 RPM, which means precisely dick to your average consumer. And that, unfortunately, is the point. Another point is that the new switchbacks use stretch poly and deprioritize zones. The old one was canvas everywhere, overkill, since the N17092 allows for lower abrasion thresholds on the inner legs and calves, a nuance climb exploited with this newer, stretchier version. They're closer to Fjallraven and Keb backpackers that Climb is copying, and that's a comfy thing. My old switchbacks I would take off when I got to the office, the new ones usually not. So they're saving me some HR issues. Last update is the knife pocket I find I get a lot of use of. I'm six foot three, 200 pounds with a 10 inch penis, and I'm wearing a size 3434, which I just killed the guy for because these pants cost $400. Now the Revit Blackwater 2 is a smock. Meaning you pull it over your head like a medieval peasant. But the clean front also means that there's no zipper to bend awkwardly or leak water. The shell is Hydrotex, Revit's proprietary don't call it Gore-Tex laminate. I have a high opinion of PTFE membranes regardless of whose name is on the patent. Hydrotex jeans I've been wearing in Vancouver for seven winters, they're still waterproof. On that note, the Blackwater's removable hood comes complete with its own bib, so the mere 10 inch weak point is itself protected by another 10 inch waterproof zipper. That's why I prefer smocks to jackets, which is the second most controversial jacket opinion I've shared this month. But hear me out. In the uninterrupted belly means I can have a kangaroo pouch, the most convenient way to quickly store the gak that accumulates on adventures. Now the Blackwater uses Cordura ripstock to pass abrasion ratings, but only at the single A level, which is bad. But not as bad as you think. CEN17092 is a range classification. The Blackwater is slide certified at 265.3 RPM, or 45 kph if the Belgians could be persuaded to speak English. And what that actually means is the Blackwater will wear through somewhere above 45, but less than 70. Again, I wish the regulation set speed standards every 10 kilometers and mandated specific speed stickers on every garment, but that would make cross shopping too easy. So we don't get to know exactly where this sits. What we do know is that EN17092 test garments with the armor removed. So these C-Smart CE1 mouse pads would add a bit more slide speed if you're skilled enough to crash on your shoulders or elbows. I chose the Blackwater because it was designed to be worn over up-spec protection. I would take my airbag. Revit would prefer you take their Proteus, 
which offers significantly more coverage than these barely legal inserts. I'm 6 foot 3, 200 pounds with a 42 inch chest and I'm wearing a size large. The hem cinches with an elastic draw cord, the sleeves with velcro, there are two exhaust slits on the rear and one hidden pocket above the kangaroo pouch. Its flap is labeled Revit Modular Lightweight All Conditions Adventure Gear Waterproof System Hydrotex 3 Layer, which is a lot of words I will immediately peel off. Convolution sucks, which is why I loved the first draft of EN17092 that simply printed abrasion speed ratings and why I hate the final version that eliminates them in favor of opaque Darmstadt's RPM numbers. Yes, every road surface is different. Yes, someone will crash at precisely 120 in a 120 rated garment and sue for lost skin, but I feel like we're inconveniencing the masses to insulate against the few. Now, fortunately, Squarespace also hates convolution, so. Oh. Let's call my website Ursula's Need for Speed, since she's the European Commission president and also a ripper who can dig it, I'm sure. Then Blueprint AI is going to build the site for me. I just tell Squarespace I want an intro, that one, an about section, maybe more like that, and a form section to build my petition. Okay, there's the pages. Go for a nice road rash red and work sans font. The EU loves to work sans fun. All right. Now I just tell the AI what this site is about. I want to petition Ursula von der Leyen and the European Commission to update EN 17092 to include specific speed ratings and stickers on protective motorcycle clothing. Let's call my writing style quirky. And away it goes. And the hardest part about writing is just getting something down on the page. So here AI pre-fills the site for me. I just have to edit. Let's see. Petition with pizzazz. Welcome to the Need for Speed movement. All right, not bad, slave. Let's uh, swap in some more topical images, AI generated, and then add some of the critical info. Ask for emails to build my petition. There's a website done. And it's pre-optimized, see, for searchability and viewability on any device. If you care about something enough to build a website, Blueprint AI takes the convolution out of it. And so you can click the link below, squarespace.com slash Fortnite, and get 10% off your first domain. Now, adventure footwear is awkward. And some days adventuring is long days on your feet, mixed terrain, so hiker makes sense. And other days adventuring is gasping around the trails trying to synchronize swim with a manatee, so motocross protection fits. It's an awkward situation, if not for the Garnet Balance Protec. See, this is a trials boot, so it's stitched to a natural gum rubber sole to be gummy on trials pegs. Conveniently for us, that also makes it gummy to walk on, while still being a full height, full leather, hard shielded EN13634 protector. The boot certification is hilarious. There are optional tests for shin and ankle impact protection, water resistance, fuel and oil resistance, sole slip resistance, breathability. All these things matter and none of them are necessarily tested for because they're optional. The required tests are transverse rigidity. This would be hydraulically pressing the sole, but the bar is set to less than half the weight of a motorcycle for either level, so eh. There's an impact cut test. They basically shoot an arrow at the boot and then see how deep it goes. That's going to be super relevant if your name is Achilles. There's an impact abrasion test, five seconds or 12, but this is done on a Cambridge machine, which is a pretentious way of naming a belt sander. At any rate, boots are pretty thick and they tend to pass either level. Really what the boot certification tells you is whether it is a shoe or an above the ankle boot. Trust the European Commission to spend millions defining something that any nearsighted toddler could tell you. Nonetheless, foot and ankle fractures have been shown to decrease with full height boots. So I like that the Garnet Balance Protec marries its tall, hard shields to a gummy sole. Just don't expect them to offer the torsional or lateral limited mobility of true motocross gear. I am a size 11, standard D width, 52 inch chest, and I'm wearing size 11s here. They fit right. I saved our helmet pick for last because it's the opposite of news. It's 
the Arai XT4 lid that came out in 2012 that I filmed my admiration for in 2016 and 2018. This helmet is so old, I could legally hire it to work for me. And I would. It's quieter than a touring-oriented Scorpion AT950. It's smaller than a Trail Nimble Climb Creos. It's lighter than a Featherweight Bell MX-9 Adventure. The XT4 does a better job critiquing helmets than I can. The credit to Arai that has become their inconvenience. See, Arai just released the XD5, which is $300 more expensive and still gets embarrassed by the XD4. The XD4 has a vented shield, not vents that blow on the shield. It has a vented shield. For sweating around foggy trails, you cannot beat cutting ports in the polycarbonate itself, but the XD5 loses that in favor of a cheaper, more conventional pinlock visor. The XD4 also has thicker cheek pads with thicker peel-away layers for customization range. But the fat-headed public couldn't be bothered, so they complained to Arai that it was too hard to put on. As a result, they made the XD5 less form-fitting and actually louder. This is probably the last time I'll get to recommend the XD4 since it will now be on sale until discontinuation. My favorite feature was always the smoosh down, smoosh up peak, switching from road to dirt mode without the fiddly position screws of the competition. I have a 58 centimeter head intermediate oval with a 72 inch chest, and this medium fits like a death mask. So this is how I would ideally gear up for adventure in 2024. Though, if I'd left eight minutes ago, I'd already be living. So buy it if you need it, ride it till you kill it.